Hey, what is up everybody? It's Animac here for Anime Uproar and today I will be attempting to solve the single biggest mystery in One Piece. The mystery that was established on the very first page of the manga. What is the One Piece treasure? The treasure of unimaginable value that Roger revealed to the world right before his execution, launching a golden age of piracy. The treasure that Joy Boy left behind on the mysterious island of Laughtail and which made Roger and his crew laugh while crying tears of joy. The treasure from which the very title of our story is derived and yet we still don't know what it actually is. Is it gold and silver? Is it secret information? Is it weapons? Is it the all blue? Is it the power of friendship? Is it all of the above? There are so many theories out there, but I finally have my own. A theory that could be the craziest one you've ever heard, so let's get into it. You guys know the drill, if you enjoy our One Piece content, leave a quick like and subscribe, it really helps me out a lot. And of course, this video will contain One Piece manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution, you have been warned. Now, I've seen a lot of great theories about the One Piece treasure, and in general, it is a super interesting topic that has been debated for over 25 years. My approach to tackling this mystery is to examine the narrative structure of the story itself and to determine what the treasure needs to be in order to make the story flow towards a satisfying conclusion. So I will not be relying on speculation about extremely specific meanings or symbols, such as for example looking at the numbers of chapters and the potential Japanese wordplay on these numbers and how that wordplay relates to what happens in the chapters themselves. Don't get me wrong, there are excellent videos on YouTube that do exactly that, including videos by Ohara and the Japanese YouTuber Uteron, but I just personally prefer to look at the more general picture and what I think the story structure and narrative require the One Piece to be. Also, since we know that Oda initially thought that the One Piece would be a 5 year story and yet it just keeps growing and growing, I find it hard to believe that he planned exactly which specific events will be contained in which specific chapters decades into the future. I could be wrong, but I just know from personal experience as someone who's done a bit of writing that I definitely wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, now let's go back to the beginning. The very first page of the very first chapter of the One Piece story. When the One Piece treasure is first introduced, we are led to believe that this is a vast material treasure left by the pirate Gold D. Roger, also known as Gold Roger. Basically, a whole bunch of people are convinced that if they find this treasure, they will become rich beyond their wildest dreams, and so the prospect of finding the treasure launches a golden age of piracy. This event is based on the final moments of real-life pirate Olivier Levasseur, who right before he was hanged back in 1730, told the crowd who had gathered to watch his execution that he left a great treasure somewhere in the world. According to legend, Levasseur wore a necklace that contained a cryptogram of 17 lines and he proclaimed that whoever deciphers the cryptogram will be able to find his treasure. He then threw the necklace into the crowd right before he was executed. For nearly 300 years after his death, treasure hunters have been searching for Levasseur's treasure and some are continuing the search to this very day. And having drawn from this epic historical event, the first page of the One Piece manga is arguably the best first page of any manga in history. It is brilliant because it sets up such a tantalizing mystery and such an epic quest from the very beginning. And since we know that real life pirates were driven primarily by the desire to enrich themselves, this idea of an unimaginable material treasure out there for the taking is certainly interesting enough to keep us reading at this early stage of the story. Who doesn't like a great mystery, more money than they can ever dream of, and a grand adventure all at the same time? But as the One Piece story has progressed, the idea that this treasure that we have been searching for for 25 years is just a bunch of gold and jewels became less and less appealing. After learning everything that we know now about the Void Century, the Ancient Kingdom, the World Government, the Poneglyphs, and Joy Boy, if the One Piece turned out to be just a bunch of material wealth like gold and silver, everyone would be pretty disappointed. Well, everyone except for maybe Nami. The One Piece treasure will certainly be extremely valuable, but at this point, it must be more than just gold coins and shiny jewels. 
It has to somehow reveal the mystery of the Void Century and the Ancient Kingdom. It has to tell the story of Joy Boy, the man who actually left the treasure there in the first place. And most importantly, it must serve a significant purpose in the overall story. Up to this point, the treasure itself hasn't really played a central role. It's just been a mysterious concept in the background of the story. Luffy certainly didn't need help from this treasure to get as far as he has, so does he even need the treasure at all? In order for the One Piece to fit smoothly into the story, it will have to play some sort of real and active role in the final arcs. It seems to me that the true nature of the One Piece treasure will depend heavily on when it is actually revealed in the story. Will it be revealed at the very end, after the final battle has already concluded, making its reveal a sort of postscript or epilogue, or will it be revealed before the final battle, meaning that it's going to be something that can actually be used in the battle itself? If the treasure is something that is revealed at the very end, after all the major conflicts have ended, then it could be something more symbolic, such as the entire world joining together to create one whole, the entire world being in one piece. Also, Totally Not Mark and Arthur, the Library of Ohara, have made exceptional videos regarding the theory that the One Piece treasure could actually be sake. They both point to the importance of the famous song Binks Sake, which has been around for centuries. They argue that the lyrics of Bing Sake could actually tell the tragic story of the Void Century, a story which has been erased from history by the world government, but which has been secretly passed on as an unassuming sea shanty from generation to generation. I actually completely agree with this interpretation of Bing's Sake. The connection to Laugh Tale at the very end of the song is a dead giveaway that this song holds important symbolic meaning about the Void Century and Joy Boy. And yes, it is possible that the song includes important clues about the Void Century, the Dawn of the World, and even the One Piece treasure itself. Building off of this, Totally Not Mark and Artur, along with others of course, have proposed that Sake itself may be the One Piece treasure. In his video, Artur did an amazing job of pointing out how Sake has been present in the story from the very beginning, from the very first chapter and the very first volume cover, and how it has continued to play an important role in the story as a symbol of friendship, brotherhood, and celebration. Both videos are truly excellent, and I don't want to understate that, and I will link both videos in the description, so definitely check them out. However, as I implied earlier, the One Piece treasure being Sake would make sense if the treasure is only revealed after the final battle. And then the Sake could be used to cement the bond that all of our heroes have formed along their epic journey. The Sake would then usher in a giant party and celebration, the likes of which the world has never seen before. But Sake itself is not likely to play a key role in actually winning the final battle, not unless Oda turns Sake into an overpowered Logia devil fruit or something. In chapter 576, Whitebeard declares in front of everyone that the One Piece is indeed real. And he says that when it is found, a grand battle will engulf the world and the whole world will be shaken to its core. To me, this strongly implies that the One Piece will be found before this grand battle and that it will play a role in shaking the world to its core, in turning the world upside down and in bringing about a new era, a new dawn. This is why I believe that the One Piece treasure won't just be something that is revealed at the very end. Rather, it will be something that will be used in the final battle itself and this distinction has a profound impact on our conception of what the One Piece could be. There are two important things to consider before I make my big reveal about what I think the One Piece has to be. We have to remember that everything written on the Poneglyphs has to be considered very important because the ancient people who created them went out of their way to preserve these monuments. And the space that they had for writing things upon these monuments was limited. So, it goes without saying that the information that these ancient people chose to preserve on the Poneglyphs was extremely important. In fact, this information is likely crucial for eventually defeating the world government and ushering in the dawn of the world. So, the fact that three ancient weapons are mentioned in detail on the Poneglyphs means that these weapons will be indispensable for the final battle. 
Poseidon, Pluton, and Uranus are not just cool ancient weapons. They are actual requirements for defeating the world government and liberating the world. You absolutely need these weapons in order to usher in the dawn of the world, and that is why Roger knew that he was too early. Poseidon had not yet reappeared, and so Roger would have to pass the torch to the next generation. And as we know now, that next generation would not only feature the return of Poseidon, but also of Joy Boy in the form of Luffy. I made a whole video arguing that Joy Boy, aka Sun God Nika, is actually the ancient weapon Uranus, and I will link that video in the description below. I mention this now because I believe that all three ancient weapons are critical for deciphering the true nature of the One Piece, and I will get back to them in a little bit. After the Poneglyphs, the second important thing to consider is Bellamy the Hyena. More specifically, let's think back to what he said in chapter 224. During a conversation in which he argues that the existence of a Sky Island is just an empty pipe dream, Bellamy also says the following. The lost city of gold? The emerald city? The great treasure of One Piece? The fools who go looking for their dream treasure cannot notice what's right in front of them. In this era of the sea, the ones who lack real strength are the ones who are killed by their own imaginations. So yeah, Bellamy says all of this, and yet, in the very next arc of the story, two of these so-called pipe dreams are confirmed to really exist. One is the Sky Island itself, Skypea, and the other is the lost city of gold, Shandora, which is located on Skypea. So what about the other two pipe dreams? The Emerald City and the One Piece treasure. As I established earlier, the One Piece is not just going to be gold and silver, because that would no longer make sense from a narrative perspective. And yet, Roger is no liar, so when he used great material wealth to entice a bunch of pirates to look for the One Piece, it's because material wealth is likely one aspect of the treasure itself. We also know that the One Piece treasure must reveal important hidden information about the Void Century and the conflict between the Ancient Kingdom and the World Government. And yet, the treasure cannot be just information alone, because in that case we would lose that aspect about material wealth. And if we take the words of Whitebeard seriously, not only is the One Piece real, but this treasure must also have the power to shake the world to its core. Material wealth and information alone cannot necessarily do that, at least not in the literal sense, but something like an ancient weapon certainly can. Thanks to the Poneglyphs, we know that the ancient weapons are indispensable for bringing about the dawn of the world, but how can the One Piece be all of these things at once? How can the One Piece treasure be a vast material treasure of immeasurable value, a wellspring of ancient secret information, and a weapon that can defeat the world government? Through my research into the true nature of this treasure, I've come to believe that the One Piece can only be one thing. An entire city that has been lost to time. A lost city could contain massive amounts of material wealth like silver, gold, and jewels, it could contain secret forbidden knowledge within its books and libraries or written on the walls of the buildings themselves, and it can also contain an ancient weapon or weapons that, when activated, could be used to shake the world to its core and win the final battle of the story. Just like the Sky Island was not a fairy tale, and just like the Golden City was not a fairy tale but a real place located atop the Sky Island, the Emerald City that Bellamy mentioned could also be real, and the One Piece may be within this Emerald City. Or it could be the Emerald City itself. After all, out of the four things that Bellamy mentions, the Sky Island, the Golden City, the Emerald City, and the One Piece, we know that three are absolutely real. So why would the Emerald City alone be an exception? The Emerald City could be Laugh Tale itself, or it could be located on Laugh Tale, although the way I picture it, the city spans the length of the entire island, so the two are basically synonymous with each other. On top of that, I believe that Laugh Tale itself may also be an ancient weapon. More specifically, the legendary battleship Pluton. Maybe the reason why Laugh Tale is so hard to find is because it is a floating island, something that has been shown to exist in the world of One Piece. 
And not only is it a floating island, but it is a floating island battleship that can be used as the ultimate weapon against the world government. And of course, we know that Pluton has to be a battleship because blueprints for it actually exist. But what we don't know is that this battleship is the size of an entire island. It is even possible that this island battleship may have the ability to dive underwater, which would go hand in hand with the many theories which state that Laugh Tale is actually underwater. This would also explain why Roger, Shanks, and the prominent members of their crews don't seem to have eaten devil fruits. If Laugh Tale is hiding underwater, then you may need the ability to swim in order to get to it. And of course, being a devil fruit user would drastically reduce your chances of getting there. But of course, if you have the right Nakama by your side, they may be able to venture to Laugh Tale and raise the island battleship to the surface for you, meaning that Luffy, Robin, Chopper, and Brooke will still be able to step on the island eventually. The other Straw Hats and their allies will just need to get there first and raise the island back up to the surface. So, even though Roger had gone to Laugh Tale, he could not yet use it to defeat the world government, and this is directly related to the fact that Shirahoshi, Luffy, and potentially Vivi were not yet born. Shirahoshi is of course Poseidon, Luffy is Joy Boy, and as I have argued, also Uranus, and Vivi as the heir of the Nefertari family could be the only one capable of activating Pluton, which is something that I also talked about in that Joy Boy is an ancient weapon video. The way I see it, all three ancient weapons must work together to form one ultimate weapon that is capable of defeating the world government. Interestingly enough, at the end of episode 126 of the One Piece anime, we see King Cobra of Alabasta standing in front of three symbols that are written in the style of ancient hieroglyphics. These symbols include a boat, a sea king, and the sun. In other words, a warship, a force that can command the Sea Kings and the Sun God Nika, Pluton, Poseidon, Uranus. Poseidon may be required either to raise Laugh Tale, aka Pluton, from the depths of the ocean or to guide it into a position where it can attack the world government. Joy Boy, aka Uranus, may also be required to serve as the leader of the anti-government forces and to inspire them with the drums of liberation. And Vivi, as a Nefertari, may be required to activate and or pilot Pluton, also known as the Great Island Battleship Laugh Tale. So, the three ancient weapons come together to form one ultimate weapon. The one piece that is required to defeat the world government and bring about the dawn of the world. This ultimate weapon will be powerful enough to destroy the red line and create the all blue, turning a world that up until now had been split into four pieces into one single piece. And of course, this would fulfill Shirely's prophecy of Luffy destroying Fishman Island, but he would only destroy it after the Fishmen are evacuated up to the surface using the Noah. And so, according to this theory, the One Piece treasure really does have it all. It has material wealth, it has secret forbidden knowledge, ancient weapons, the power of friendship and fate bringing everyone together in the right place at the right time, and even the all blue. It is all connected, and I personally would love to see something like this happen, because just imagine that final battle. Imagine Luffy and the Straw Hats pulling up to the red line on a massive island-sized battleship flanked by Sea Kings on all sides. Everyone is there. The Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Zunesha, the revolutionary army. The world government gives it their all. Imusama's secrets are unraveled. The national treasure of Marijua is revealed. And in the ensuing battle, the world is shaken to its core. The red line is destroyed. The world government is defeated. And as the sun rises on a new dawn of the world, it reveals the all blue. And then of course everyone celebrates with lots of sake. Let me know what you guys think about this theory, and feel free to share all your favorite theories down in the comments below. One thing I didn't mention in this video, but something that could play a major role in the final arc, is the island of God Valley. And some have pointed out that God Valley resembles the Emerald City from the Wizard of Oz in its structure. We know that God Valley mysteriously vanished from the face of the Earth 38 years ago. So could God Valley and Laugh Tale be one and the same? Or could God Valley be a direct stepping stone to Laugh Tale? 
I could totally see Roger laughing when he realizes that the laugh tale that he's been searching for for years was actually a place that he already visited over a decade earlier. Anyway, don't forget to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. If you're looking for a video to watch next, I recommend my video about Joy Boy being an ancient weapon, link in the description. If you want to see more One Piece content in the future, don't forget to leave a like, it helps me out a lot. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Subscribing is a completely free but very important way of directly supporting the channel. You can also hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at AnimeUproar. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys!